Hello fellow Stardust. So I am recording this review in my studio instead of in my car. This was supposed to be a ride along review, but Brandon wasn't feeling too well after the film, so I just went ahead and brought him home as soon as it was done, which I was okay with because it gave me some time to really soak up this film and there was a lot to take in. This film premiered at Sundance this past January and is the directorial debut of Goran Stolevsky and it stars the ever so talented Numi Rapace along with Anna Maria Marinka and Sarah Klamoska. Unfortunately, Numi doesn't get too much screen time but when we do see her, she is perfection. All of the actors in this film put on an amazing performance. This film takes place in the 1800s in Macedonia. At the start of the film, we see a witch attempt to take a baby from its mother, but the mother pleads with the witch, asking her to at least let her keep her daughter for 16 years. The witch agrees, and then the mother hides her daughter in a cave for those 16 years. And because this child has grown up in a cave, when the witch comes to collect her, she is clearly developmentally slow and has no social skills. And without giving away too much, we then see this character throughout the film learn how to interact with people and to just live on this earth. The cinematography in this one is beyond beautiful. It's atmospheric and it's personal. And it's interesting that they chose a square aspect ratio instead of our typical 16-9. This choice is what I think made the film feel a bit more intimate because the framing is a bit smaller than what we're used to. When the film started, I was completely sucked into this world and was excited to see what was to come. Another element that I I think made this film feel really intimate was the voiceover. The voiceover gave off some ASMR vibes, so it really got into my head. This is an international film, so there were subtitles. However, you could almost ignore the subtitles and still gather what this story is about because it is so visual. Now, I don't recommend going into this movie and not reading the subtitles, but that's just to say that this movie was very visual and the emotion in the film was oozing out out of every corner of the screen. This is a very, very slow burn and it may not be for everyone, especially because there isn't much of a linear storyline. Instead, we get these different snippets from different lives that come together and bring us this overarching message, which is a commentary on the patriarchal society and the place of women. The special effects were great. We get some good blood and guts from time to time. It's not too little and it's not too much for the story. And I really enjoyed the witch's nails. Those were perfectly nasty. <laughs> then we also have our creepy witch who had burn scars from head to toe and a few little hairs poking out of her head, which, which kind of made me laugh from time to time, but her presence on screen definitely brought a sense of doom. For me, this film ran just a little bit too long. The runtime is an hour and 48 minutes, but it felt like two and a half hours. I feel like 20 or more minutes could have been shaved off this runtime. Things did start to get a little bit repetitive and it just needed to wrap up a little bit more quickly. But overall, I really enjoyed watching this witch's tale unfold and the lore that went along with it was just exciting and new. It's really hard to compare this to other films because I don't really have any films that come to mind that are like it except for maybe The Witch. But other than that, this film does a great job of standing alone. The music, the sound effects, the actors, and the atmosphere just all came together beautifully. Now this next little part is going to be a little bit spoily, so if you want to click out, go ahead and do that now. So while we have this commentary on the patriarchal society, we also have this other message of good overcoming evil. You know, we have our witch who has turned our lead character into a witch herself, expecting her to go through the same trials and tribulations that she did hundreds of years ago. The witch was burned at the stake, which is why she has all of these burn scars. And when our lead character doesn't go through all the troubles that she went through, 
she becomes a bit jealous. As I mentioned before, the lore is something that I really liked in this witch's tale. So these witches are able to take on the form of somebody else using their witch's spit. When they've chosen their target, they take the guts from their victim and put them in their chest, which then makes them transform into that person, and their previous body then disappears. So we see our lead character become different people. At one point, she's another young woman, she's then a child, a man, even a dog. And in each life, she's taken care of by the people around her, even if they do suspect that she is possessed by a witch. And this comes as a surprise to the witch because she expected her to have the same treatment that she had hundreds of years ago when she was burned at the stake. In the end, our lead ends up with a husband and a baby, something the witch never had. The witch attempts to kill our lead's baby, but the witch uses her witch's spit to turn that baby into a witch itself. And after that, she then kills the witch. The end does get a little bit confusing and drawn out, which is why I wished it was just a little bit more condensed. But Overall, I really appreciated both messages. And it was really fun watching the characters learn how to be human, learning how to laugh, learning how to raise their eyebrows, learning how to just be with people. And I was totally ready to give this one five rainbow skulls when the film started. I was so giddy, but it just started to drag on and on and on. So that is why this one is going to get four rainbow skulls out of five. Well, thank you for joining me today, fellow starters, for this semi ride along review. I'll be back next week with more videos. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hop on the Rainbow Fright Freight Train <coughs> and hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell. That way you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. I hope I see you next time. Peace. Yay.